today is to putting slip on the clay. And what I've done, I've actually made the slip, and this is not too wonderfully beautiful picture of it, of a container. But what I've done, I've taken porcelain, and I've soaked porcelain down into a slip, and then I put uh, black mason stain on this particular mason stain. It's 6600 is the number if you want to order black mason stain. And I put it in just to color. Uh, to color meaning I just put the mason stain in until I like the color that I've got, which mixing this up is basically a, a dark gray, which it will end up coming out black. So what I've done, I, I made a pinch pot, and then I'm just going to paint, it's still wet, the pinch pot's still wet, I'm just going to paint the mason stain onto the piece, and I want to cover it, and just one coat is sufficient. So I'm going to put my fingers inside, so that will help me paint the outside. Should, I don't have to paint the inside, I can if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and paint across the bottom so that I can scratch through and scratch my name into it using the same technique that I'm going to use to design this piece. Since the slip is 95% clay, which is basically nothing but porcelain, uh, it needs to be applied when the clay is still wet. Okay? Alright. So what I'm going to do, I'll clean the brush later. This piece needs to dry completely for this particular technique. Uh, can you blend colors? You can. You can take, we have quite a few different colors. Mason stains already mixed up. You could blend uh, from dark to light, from white to black, from blue to green or you can paint your picture with your slips. It's totally up to you what you want to do with the slips. This particular technique, um, you need to paint your slip on and then set it out and let it dry. And uh, that sometimes that takes a day to two days, depending on the weather, depending on the humidity. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this aside, which I would probably design it tomorrow. I'm going to put this aside right now. I have a pot that I put the design, I put the slip on and I've already let it dry completely out. So what I'm going to do next is to paint wax resist on the dry pot. Now this is just regular wax resist that I'm going to go ahead and paint on. One coat is sufficient fingers inside so I can paint the outside. I want to paint it across the bottom so that way I can, as I said earlier, use the same design technique to apply my name. Which makes it, makes it look pretty cool. A lot of times that's something that's kind of new to me is to, I'm trying whatever I'm glazing a pot or designing a pot, I try to create, create the same type of design across the bottom so there's unity in the bottom of the pot that's designed the same way as the sides. As I said, one nice even coat is all I need. I'm going to go ahead and get the rim. Okay, now I need for this wax resist to dry before I start the carving. And on the paintbrush, I really want to wash this out with soap and water very well so that someone else this this they don't get a brush that has wax in it but also it doesn't ruin the brush the brush is perfectly okay and the wax is what is a water base so i'm going to use soap and water and really clean this brush well this needs to dry for a couple of at least an hour before i can design it so what we're going to do is stop here and we'll come back to this the second part of this demo when you paint the wax resist on, it's opaque, and once it's dry, it's kind of transparent. So it's kind of a yellowish, waxy looking color, but it's more transparent. So you want to let it dry, and then at this point, you want to carve through the wax into the dry clay 
to create your lines. And you have little burrs of clay that comes up and, go, and the wax, and you can take care of that as you go, or you can wait till you're through designing. And so what I'm doing is just scratching right into the dry clay through the wax, creating these designs, lines. And it's a very nice way to create very nice, delicate lines. And I really enjoy just making this up as I go. It's just real, I don't know exactly how to say it, but it's just a lot of fun to create designs as I'm going, just scratching the lines in. And what I would probably do, probably enjoy doing more is to carve the entire pot with these designs and, let, and allow the design to grow and cover the entire surface. And what my goal is, is to inlay white slip into the lines and then uh, the wax resist will resist uh, the, white, the white, so it'll leave a nice black surface on the outside. What I'm gonna do now is to inlay white porcelain into the uh, designs. And I've got, basically it's white porcelain, and it's porcelain that I put white mason stain, so it's I put white in the white porcelain, so it's basically going to give me a, um, a white line. And you can see how the wax resist is resisting the slip outside the line. So I want to make sure it goes inside. these little dots that's, that's happening on top of the, the wax, it should, it should disappear. It should brush right off after the bisque firing because it's actually adhering to the wax and the wax should burn off. Noticing on this particular piece, I did not wax the bottom. And I wish I had, because I could I could treat the signature the same way as I'm treating this this design technique. Uh, and I, the whole time I'm giving a demo, most of the time I'm thinking about what if I what if students didn't follow my directions precisely. And I'm, I'm giving you permission to do that, that um, you don't have to use black and white. You can use any color, any combination of colors you choose. It doesn't have to have high contrast with like the black and the white. It can have low contrast and be good. It could be dark blue on top of black. I don't really know. If, you, if, if that's what you want to do, and you want to put low contrast or two contrasting colors orange and blue together or whatever you're welcome to. I've had pretty good success with, the, with this black. The whole idea started with uh, I'm reading a book on uh, atom smashers and when they smash the atom they have a the pictures of these atoms being smashed as a black background with white lines and they're absolutely gorgeous lines. Uh, they don't look like this, but they're similar, and I was trying to uh, trying to achieve that. Um, and uh, Forrest and I got together. We always get together and knock heads, and, and so I. This is this is where we're going with this. This has already been fired, and the wax is off of it. And yeah, I had this kind of this this type of design with with the uh, Atom Smasher where they take pictures of those 
all those particles being uh, separated from the atom. And even though this doesn't look a whole lot like it, it was the inspiration to doing this. And so it's kind of interesting. I really enjoy overlapping designs and moving one design just right on top of the other design. Uh, and it, it, it goes back to the um, looking at the Anastasi Indian paintings uh, where they would have images of uh, one figure, a floating figure, right on top of the next floating figure. So that's where I'm kind of going with this. And um, you can come up with your own version of how you want to do this. Uh, the, uh, this particular pot uh, needs to be bisque fired now, so this, I can put this in the kill and bisque fire it. And it's too bad all these dots will, fall, will come off. I think they're really, really kind of nice, nice looking. But I'll get a nice crisp background with, uh, with a nice clean line. That's just, just one design technique. There are thousands of ways of designing pots. This is not, this is just one, one way. And it's kind of fun to, uh, to explore these different ways of design. And I'll come up with a few, few more demos on this.